Consent also makes the bee harvesting protective gear for the farmers. While harvesting, farmers are supposed to always keep away from bee stings as the venom can easily lead to death. This is a protective gear and this is the head gear. So now during harvesting, you have to make sure that you wear this protective gear to avoid stings from the bees. This will help you, first of all, to protect your life because the venom for bees is too poisonous sometimes that when they sting you, it can lead to death. Everything or every industry is modernizing, is taking another step. We found that as Bee House, this is our lifeline, bees. So we had to make a way that we give our farmers a better way so that they professionalize the business, the business. So that's when we decided that we should also go into making hives so that they give us quality products. It depends on your capacity. First of all, the land. Second of all, we can, a good farmer or professionalized farmer or someone who has taken beekeeping as a profession, the minimum should be 50 hives. 50 hives can give you good returns. But however, because now at our case, this one costs minimum 100,000. So a capital, but you can start in, in 10 tens. Take 10, take 20, take 30. Until at least you call yourself a professional in this, you have 50 hives. Among those other activities that go on Essence Farm is the processing of honey. Inside this room, honey that is bought from the farmers is finally processed for commercial purposes. We buy honey from our real farmers whom we've trained. In the apiary, that's where quality is controlled from first before it is brought here for processing. In that, when we receive honey, we take the weights. We also check for the quality. When it comes to the combs, we check and sort black combs and light combs. So during the process, that's where our quality control starts from. Then we, when, if it's for these captive bees, Hives, it will come with a comb. When it is from the lung stroth, we also move with the extractor. We have what we call an extractor, whereby you get these frames and put them in an extractor. So most especially because our farmers can't afford buying the, an extractor, we go and help them. So we put the, we get the frames, put them in the honey extractor, then we start sieving the honey. By sieving that, we, because it uses the, what you call the centrifugal force, we put those frames in the extractor, then we rotate manually, then the honey will spring out. Mr. Dixon Biryomo Mesho is the executive director at the Uganda National Apiculture Development Organization known as TUNADO. He has for long carried out trainings for youth and women in the manufacturing of the low-cost hives so as to try and increase the honey production in the country. He believes that without these bees, agricultural productivity in the country will always be relatively low. Uh, the Uganda National Apiculture Development Organization, TUNADO, is uh, a member-based a uh, beekeepers organization. It unites producers, processors, uh, packers, trainers, equipment makers, and all other stakeholders working in the honey value chain. There is high demand for beeswax all over the world. And uh, Sora Wax Extractor 
is very expensive for a farm. For example, one costs about 4 million Ugandan shillings. And uh, what we are doing here is to fabricate a beeswax solar wax extractor where a farmer can at least access it at 200,000, so cutting 3.8 million. We're also trying to make these smokers. Uh, you know, our honey has always been criticized to have a lot of smoke because usually the people when they are harvesting, they use fire, they end up killing the bees, but also using a lot of smoke that ends up in honey. So what we are trying to do here is train these youths to make smokers so that the beekeepers can start using smoker instead of using fire to harvest. That will reduce the, the smoke, the amount of smoke in honey and increase the quality of honey. As we are preparing for export market to the EU, then we are sure we shall be exporting quality honey because it is only the smoke that has been putting our honey at low quality. We are training women entrepreneurs in making bee suits. One of the biggest challenges affecting the beekeeping sector is fear for the bees. Most people fear bees. And when you fear bees, it means you can't engage in this profitable business. So what we are trying to do is train women make these bee suits. A bee suit in Uganda has been costing 250000 And with this training, we think we, the bee suit cost is going to reduce to 100000 So that is going to be affordable. And these women we are training are from seven districts of West Nile and Bunyoro. So that means that people in West Nile and Bunyoro, they, in each of those districts, they will have contacts of where they can be able to buy the bee suits. So right now we are trying to bring in more women and youth by bringing beehives at home, keeping them in an apiary, bring, telling the youth to add value to bee products. So we are making beekeeping equipment. You can see we are making bee suits, we are making smokers. There are things that women can do at home without even keeping bees, like making jelly, like making candles, like making shoe polish, even bee venom. So our, basic, our job basically is to coordinate and promote the apiculture sector in Uganda and make sure that everyone involved in apiculture earns decently from it. One of the most important role the bees play in the world is pollination services. I have not seen anybody who is responsible for pollinating the crops that we eat or for crops that we sell. For example, coffee, sunflower, watermelon, citrus, all these fruits, 80% of the crops grown in Uganda are pollinated by bees. So now, if you misuse, if we have misuse of agrochemicals and we kill bees, it means there will be no pollinators and therefore the productivity per acreage will not be there. The vision of making uh, every Ugandan earn 20 million from their farm is not going to be realized because there is a missing link and that missing link is the pollinator. So we must consider bees as an agro input. At least every farmer should have a, a beehive with a colony for purposes of pollinating their crops to increase productivity. Thank you for being a great viewer of this amazing NBS Agribusiness episode tonight. The show returns next week, same time, with yet another exciting agriculture venture. From the entire team and me, Narimanya Dian, it's a good night.